How's it going, you awesome bunch of bakers? Hope you're on a great day so far. Welcome to episode number eight of the rye bread series. Today, we're making a dark Eastern European style rye bread. So let's get to the kitchen and get started. While looking at the ingredients, this one may seem similar to the previous dark rye bread recipe I posted, but there are some key differences. This time, we are using a portion of whole grain rye flour for extra flavor. We are skipping the pre-ferment to speed up the process and simplify it and we will be glazing this bread with a unique glaze I had not used before and the resulting loaf turned out quite similar to the breads I used to eat back home in Latvia. It has a very rich flavor and aroma and the crumb is super bouncy and the crust is nice and soft which are all great qualities for a rye bread. So let's get to it and see how it's made. Starting with the ingredients, we'll need some whole grain rye flour, also known as dark rye flour, we'll also need some white rye flour and a little bit of white wheat flour. For sweetening and acidity, we'll use some molasses, but you can of course swap this for any sweet syrup that you like. The real magic ingredient in this recipe is the fermented rye malt powder. You can hear more about it in my other dark rye bread videos. Okay, we'll also need some water, some apple cider vinegar, that along with the molasses will add a nice bit of acidity. But don't worry, this bread does not taste acidic. We're using these ingredients to stop the bread from becoming sticky. Okay, we'll also need some yeast, salt, caraway seeds, and a bit of cornstarch and water for the glaze. Okay, moving on to the equipment. We'll need a bowl for mixing our dough in, we'll need scales, a dough scraper, temperature probe, a brush for the glaze, and we'll need a small pan for cooking that glaze. Now, a baking vessel is not essential, but it will come really handy. I'm gonna use my Lodge Combo Cooker. It is great at radiating heat, baking the bread evenly from all sides, and even more importantly, it traps steam inside it. The steam will help the bread expand as it bakes. If you want to learn more about steaming, you can find a video about it in the Principles of Baking playlist. If you don't have a pan like mine, you can always use a spray bottle. It is great for moistening the surface of the loaf and even spraying the inside of the oven. I will use both my baking pot and the spray bottle. But if you don't have a spray bottle either, you can always brush the surface of the loaf with water or just rub it down with a wet hand. And next up, we have a piece of equipment that is not totally necessary, but I will use it. And that is a proofing basket. Again, if you don't have one of these, you can just proof your loaf on a tray that you're going to bake it on. Or you can use a bowl lined with a clean tea towel. Bread making is not that strict. You can make the same loaf a hundred different ways. So let's begin. We'll start with a scald, which will contain the fermented rye malt powder, the caraway seeds, a portion of the whole grain rye flour, the molasses, and some boiling water. It is the scald that gives this bread this unique texture. It will make it nice and bouncy and soft. But not only that, it will make it stay fresher for longer. Mixing flour with boiling water gelatinizes the starches, which will make them hold on to moisture a lot more effectively. And that will stop the bread from staling too soon. So mix your scald until there's no more dry flour left and leave it to cool down. My kitchen was relatively cold on that day, so it took only a couple of hours for it to cool down sufficiently. But you can certainly mix this and leave it for the next day if you want to. I did not want my scald getting too cool because my kitchen was pretty chilly and I'm also going to use some relatively warm water. So let's continue by mixing the main dough. Add the remaining water, the vinegar, the salt, the yeast, then give it all a good mix. Maybe grab a whisk to make your life easier. Once everything's nice and smooth, add the white rye flour, mix again, then add the wheat flour, the whole grain rye flour and mix to the dough. And while I'm doing that, let me address the vinegar in the recipe. Rye bread can suffer from a process called starch attack. It is when enzymes in the flour convert too much of the starch into sugars, which can result in a very gummy bread. Now these enzymes can be slowed down with acidity. That's why you will often see ingredients like buttermilk, yogurt, beer, even vinegar, sourdough starters, honey, molasses, and other acidic ingredients in rye bread recipes. And if you have a sourdough starter, you can certainly build the leaven using around 20% of the total flour in this recipe and introduce some acidity and extra flavor in that way. Okay, once your dough is fully mixed, it'll be super sticky, so use wet hands when you're handling it. Place it in a clean bowl, double check the temperature. Mine came out at around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, bulk fermentation should take around two hours. Halfway through bulk fermentation, we will give this dough a fold. Since there is a little bit of wheat flour in this dough, we might as well try and give the gluten a better chance. And besides that, folding will also equalize the temperature in the dough. Since my kitchen is quite cool, the outside of the dough will cool down quicker. Folding it will distribute that temperature evenly. Even though it might not look like it, this dough is very sticky, so use plenty of flour. Once you've done the fold, Place the dough back into the bowl with the smooth side up, cover it and leave it to ferment for one more hour or until the dough has doubled in size. That's always a good indicator. After bulk fermentation, 
it is final shaping time. Again, use plenty of flour. The shaping method here is slightly unconventional. Instead of folding the dough, simply degas it and press it into shape, be it round or oblong, it's up to you. Shaping it this way will ensure that the surface is smoother. After shaping, we can place it in the proofing basket. Don't worry about dusting the basket with flour. The dough is already coated in flour, enough, so it will not stick. The orientation of the dough doesn't really matter this time. Place it down and gently press it so it fits the shape. Now we can cover it up and leave it for the final proof, which should take only about an hour or so. As soon as the surface develops a few good cracks, it's ready for the oven. Make sure that during the final proofing time you preheat the oven, 250 degrees Celsius, 480 Fahrenheit, fan off. And of course preheat your baking vessel, if you are using one. This is what the dough should look like once it's fully proofed. Now we need to invert it for baking. The best way to do this is to place a piece of baking paper onto the dough, hold your hand against it, lift up the basket and then flip it upside down in one smooth move. Next up you want to brush off any excess flour. You can use your hand or you can use a brush. And before it goes in the pan, we'll spray it down with water. This will stop the crust from drying too soon as it bakes and it will make it softer in the end. And again, if you don't have a spray bottle, you can just rub the dough with wet hands. And now it's ready for the pan. Take some precautions to not burn your table. Get the hot pan out the oven. A thick pair of oven gloves are just perfect for this job. Gently place the loaf in the preheated pan, cover it with a lid and then pop it in the oven. The initial bake will take 30 minutes. As soon as you place the bread in the oven, turn the temperature down to 190 degrees Celsius or 375 degrees Fahrenheit. 30 minutes later, remove the lid from the pan and then pop the bread back into the oven for another 15 minutes of baking. And towards the end of those 15 minutes, make the glaze. In a small pan, combine the cornstarch and the water. Then bring it over to the cooker and set it on high heat. Cook it for two or three minutes, stirring it occasionally until it becomes nice and thick. This is what it should look like once it's done. Leave it on the side and once the 15 minute timer for the bread is up, pull it out the oven and brush with the hot glaze. Make sure to cover the whole surface of it and then place the loaf back into the oven for another 5 to 10 minutes of baking or until the glaze looks dry. This is what it should look like once it's done. Nice and shiny. This might be my new favorite glaze, at least for rye breads. It's done baking, but it's not quite ready yet. So leave it to cool down for a couple of hours and then wrap it in some cling film and leave it to mature overnight. If you cut it too soon, it might be gummy inside. But there you have it. That is how you make a dark Eastern European style rye bread. The use of a glaze like this is extremely common where I'm from, along with the addition of rye malt powder, molasses and caraway seeds. Every time I eat a bread like this, it reminds me of home and of my childhood. It is one of my all time favorite breads for sure. So what do you think of this kind of rye bread? Which is your favorite type? Let me know down in the comments. You want to see more deals like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.